bottles on wine Picking up skills of every kind Old school thrills and modern frights We're serving up screens for 60 nights From ghastly new to aged gore Two months of chills, who could want more? It's flip-flopped over, double the dread Laugh till you scream, we'll hide under the bed From cheesy slashers to eerie cold Two months of horror, new and old So welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk a little bit more in depth about Heretic. So this is going to be our spoiler discussion about the film, um, because there's a few other there's a few things we want to talk about that um, if you've seen the movie, maybe you uh, have thoughts about as well. Uh, You can put that down in the comments below. Uh, If you've not seen the movie, I highly suggest you going and seeing the film before you watch this video. So that's your warning. Go check it out first. It's well worth it. We think you like it please do so and then come back. Absolutely. So, so I, I only wrote a few notes really for the whole thing, Andy, but um, I just thought that there, there would be more stuff that we could actually talk about with it because it, first of all, uh, for those who've seen it then that are here, they, you know that there's a lot of discussion of religion in this film mm-hmm. movie. And so going into it, what I thought was so smart about the script with this movie was you know, they've got Hugh Grant's character really like disassembles religion throughout the whole thing. Yes. In a way that I was like, wow, that's a great way to break it down. And the, and the way that it's written. So, I mean, obviously this comes from the script that all these points are in there. Uh, Hugh Grant delivering. I can't, I mean, it's hard to picture somebody else doing it and doing it as well. He did such a great job with this role. Yeah. But what I really appreciated with the movie, and, and I hate to kind of skip ahead, but I do want to just say one thing about the ending. Um, being really afraid that this movie was going to kind of fizzle at the end. What I really appreciated was, and that's why I told Tara when we walked out. By the way, Tara said, if I get if I was giving this movie a rating out of 10, I'd give it 8.5. She never says anything. That's solid. I'm like, that's that's pretty good. So yeah. um So I was surprised, but um, what I'll say about the religious side of it is I don't think it's one-sided. I think it's well-written to where you could make an argument for certain religions as well, countering that. One of the things I liked about, especially with the ending, was I'm like, she prays before, you know, uh, basically before she gets killed at the end. She's praying before it, and then the other girl that was seemingly dead gets up. Maybe she was still alive. Maybe she rose from the dead. You don't know, and she kills Hugh Grant, and it's like, but it could have been that she was still alive, and that she just had a little bit of energy left. It's so ambiguous that it still has that. Yeah, You could still walk out of there with faith it still walk away and go yeah but that that ending shows this you know it shows that yeah that god really intervened and it's like uh, yeah you can take the other side as well so absolutely that's what i loved about it is it it does a lot of a lot of hammering on religion mm-hmm. but it does a great job of countering that as well so it's a really smart written script yeah um and these are the guys that did i know they did 65 which, they did a quiet place Quiet Place. Yeah, yeah the movie apartment. called Haunt that I don't seem to recall. I saw Haunt, and that was not bad. That was a horror movie. That was pretty much a slasher. Okay. Um, not bad. It was not well, a bad I, listen, these guys, based on this script alone, I would, I'm a fan. Yeah. And I want to see what they do next. Because, like you said, I mean, you're dead on when you say it's a smart script. Because when, he, when Hugh Grant... The way this thing just moves from them knocking on the door and his trans his transition from this f- fop of a guy yeah to this basically a th- theologian and he's breaking down Christianity and and literally breaking it down to to making it 
seem as equal to just a board game like Monopoly. And I'm like, and, and you know, you know me, Gary, my, my, my problems yeah. I have, I struggle with faith and, and yeah. uh, I have a dog whining next to me. <laughs> so I'm on board when he's doing this breakdown of religion and how it seems like a bit of a, a shame. You're on board with a monopoly. I'm Sorry. on board with his board game references. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not here to bash religion. I'm just saying it, it's always been a, a struggle for me. I've always had a, a struggle with uh, faith and religion. And I'm enjoying this because I was like, yeah, he's making some great points. Yeah. And then the fact that the, the one girl. Did you hear that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one girl really seems to never lose her faith. Yeah. Well, actually, I'll say both because it's interesting that when they're forced to make their decision on the door and the girl that's kind of the punky one, so mm -hmm. to speak. Yeah. She she chooses belief. Now, it's like she's making it seem like that's what he wants her to say. Mm -hmm. But my point, like you getting back to what you were saying, though, is even in the darkest points of this movie, this girl holds on to her faith. Yeah. And I find that interesting because that's one of the things I've always found interesting about people uh, who are who are very religious. The fact that it, it, you really are at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to get preacher here. You're really just believing in the in a maybe, you know, the possibility that there's something out there. That's what faith is. You, you're believing that there's just something else, right? And faced with odds, it's, there's there's a definite end for you. She still believes that there's something else. And uh, I, yeah. I, I, that always makes me feel good. Yeah. You know, even though I have my doubts and I struggle, I like, I wish that I had a, um, uh, a faith, a, a belief that I could sink in myself into. Uh, I don't, but I, I appreciate those that do and, and good on you for that. And uh, this movie really, it, it, I don't, makes you feel good <laughs> in an yeah. odd way. It makes you feel like, well, maybe it, it, in the midst of, a shit show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to that discussion. I don't really want to open up in, into this, yeah. um, into this podcast. Uh, there is a lot, there is that, um, you're, I feel like a lot of people always search for the me. I mean, most people that are introspective or self-reflecting are looking for that reason that we're here, the reason to, to be, uh, is that a night ranger reference. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> I did it. I did it for you. You did it for love, uh, Gary. I did. Oh, there it is. Another one. Kind of. Um, look, the, the, the thing that's really cool. First of all, the pop, the pop culture references with the Monopoly board game, the song that they break down that he breaks down the oh song. Oh my God. It was that awesome. He talks about iteration and stuff. And I, I mean, I thought that was all like, this is not just a film. It's not just, you're actually it's it's a mind game yeah there's uh, no hanging fruit that you could easily just pick yeah and yeah. they don't do that they, they take right. it away with the whole like you said the, the song and then the, the the games and yeah yeah i'm in mean, star wars uh but he's oh, got yeah, dude the jar jar <laughs> binks reference was i was like i mean my crowd all applauded for that They're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it's it's really crafty mind games, and the best part about it is it's not somebody that's just. I mean, he's clearly well. Hugh Grant's character is well, like read on Over. everything. He clearly yeah. knows a lot about all the different religions, and he's playing a game with these two young girls that he knows he's got a superior intellect over with with this particular thing, but they hold their own. And that's what I thought was great about it is, is they're able to, they see some of through some of the bullshit and it's really crafty the way it's written. And they play this character off that you've got, like you said, the punky one, the one that's, that's come to the religion, wasn't born in it. Right. Turns to a religion and is now in this. And then the one born into it, that's believed it since little, you know, since birth order. Um, and you've got her seeming like she's the naive one. When the other one's more worldly, which is brought up in the very beginning with the discussion about magnum condoms of all things. Yes. And some of the stuff at the very beginning, you've got this, it, it, you're already set up with these characters. You're set up with this girl being the world or the, the well, more rounded person that's got world experience. 
and the one that's just a naive person going through life. And that's not at all how that ends up playing out. And I thought that was really cool that like, you know, now we're like, oh, here, here we are with the, the one that's the naive one, but no, she, she's got some smarts of her own. And so I thought that was really cool the way, you know, it could have been easily been this, you know, power position kind of thing to bring in some of the political, like, uh, like office political kind of thing with the power over a woman kind of thing and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, these are two strong character, female characters also that hold their own during it. And the other thing I'll say about the mind game thing was that you're never really sure what's going on, you know, at any given moment. It's hard to see the path to the ending of this movie. Yeah. Other than there was one, like, to me, there was one thing that's kind of the foreshadowing of the, uh, the, board that she breaks with the the nails yeah um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, i saw that too I yeah like, oh, it's I very that. apparent that's come into play and you're like well, you're just waiting for that to come into play you're not sure how it's going to come into play but you're assuming it's going to in some fashion i actually thought that maybe one of the women that were held in the basement that one of them the one that was free kind of that he took around i thought maybe she was going to be the one to use it or something and save her but yeah much better the way it was actually written um and uh so just really crafty i mean i just can't get over how crafty well, the it, script was let's not uh gloss over that the uh one of the other main characters of the movie was the house itself yeah you know, yes it yes. was it, it it was fascinating the house was like a house of uh you know magic house i mean there's there's passages yeah. and hidden doorways and it plays a part yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was um, I, again. It's everything that I wanted in a movie. Just everything. It, like I, I was, I, I didn't want it to end. Yeah, I yeah. just I was like, I'll oh, just keep going, keep opening another door. Let's see what that hallway goes. Like I just was, and um, I don't know, man. I I, I just real quick. I, 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 I would see this again. Yeah, I want to mention because uh, you mentioned the house thing. One of the really cool shots in it. By the way, this thing was well directed and 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 that as well i mean there's it's some really there's just a the way that it's done there's that tense part with the rug and the way that whole thing's filmed so craftily done but one of my favorite shots is when the girl's trying to escape and they right. actually do that they look down they on the, of the miniature oh, yeah. yeah that he has he has this miniature of the house yeah it's a great scene and I'm glad they didn't overdo that. I'm glad they just had it for that one moment. But man, was that worth it for that shot? It was so cool. It, it paid off so well because you're like, oh, that was a great shot. Like it, you're already like, loving the film, but then you get yeah. this great, smart scene, like just yeah. smartly shot scene. Um, yeah, man, Th this was just. I, I know it sounds like we're just. <laughs> Last, last thing I'll mention, we've already we mentioned it in the other thing is I just want to say that the the acting in this was superb. I, I just thought that that the acting was perfect for it. I mean, Hugh Grant, super menacing, but he's still got that kind of charm to him. Like you still he, see the rom com, the Notting Hill in him. You're like, he's still a good dude, he, right? He, yeah. He, he's oh, not, wait, he's, he's not. He's a fucking monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and I just don't want to yeah. believe it. I'm like, I still this, this is my guy, you know. Was, uh... And then uh, an almost unrecognizable um, Topher Grace. Topher Grace. Yeah, I was trying to think of his name. I'm his looking tweets. at him like. So can I say was something that I thought, and it didn't pay out that way. So I was like, oh, okay, I thought he had something to do with sending them to that house. Oh, really? Like <laughs> he was in cahoots with um, Hugh Grant. Bite off a piece again. Now it didn't make any sense, but when I saw him, I was like, "Why is he in the movie?" You know, another another funny thing that um, that I thought happened that I should have seen coming, but I didn't was when he shows up. I keep I for so they they make it a point with the key for the lock where they lock the bikes at the front, and they made a point of that being in the wrong pocket. And I was like, "Oh, he just." My thought was, oh, he just searched their pockets and just put it back in the wrong one. Yeah. Right. So then I, sorry. sorry. So I was thinking when Topher 
shows up, I'm like, he's going to see the bikes out there. It's going to be in the give. So I, you know, I, yeah. it's like the, you feel like the filmmakers are already way ahead of you on some of yep. the stuff that you start thinking. And so, man, just really well done. I, I can't say enough about it. I just thought it was really good. It was an enjoyable experience. Like you said, I'd see it again. I just, oh, it, was absolutely. Fun, it was a fun movie to watch. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Um, I, I got nothing else. I mean, look, my lonely note is uh, Evil Hugh Grant is awesome. <laughs> and I put, I love the premise. I love the light humor in it. And yeah. the suspense of this film is is just dead on. Yeah. Like, it's just enough suspense that you, you're on the edge. You know, you feel for these girls. And the way they, they slowly transition from being, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> cheery. And, you know, can we talk to you about our Lord and Savior? And then the, the slow, the very slow transition to the f- absolute fear. Yeah. And, you know, it's there. And it's just like, and I, I went right along with them because I started getting more and more nervous. I'm like, <laughs> damn, dude, like, yeah. And, you know, you just want to make a run for it and they can't. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God. It just, yeah. everything was just. It, it, it just perfect for me. I love this movie. I loved it so much. Can't recommend. It. I immediately texted my daughter as soon as, as soon as the credits started rolling. I was like, "Go see it. It's awesome." End of conversation. I'll tell you nothing else about it. Go see it. Yeah, I told Jeff because I didn't want to spoil anything <laughs> for him. I told him um, I would text him worth the theater or wait, wait for home, wait for stream. And uh, it, I screwed up. I was like, instead of texting that, I was like, I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> And I was yeah. like, oh shit, that's not what I was supposed to say. Yeah, I'll go see uh, it with you. Like, if you want to go, I'll go see this movie. But yeah, so I agree. I mean, I that's all the notes that I really wrote down, just a few things about it, but um, some things I, I definitely want to mention that one scene too, because I just thought that was cool. But yeah, man, yeah you're see, right. I'm glad you did yeah, too. I shouldn't say go see it because hopefully you didn't watch this until you've seen it. But right. Um, tell us something if there's something that we missed about the movie that we didn't mention tell us down below because um i'd like to get a conversation going about this movie because i really felt like one of the one of my favorite things i've seen this year oh yeah so, i was gonna say yeah uh for me this is the this is probably my favorite film of the year uh yeah well i've got i've got a few other ones that i'd probably put in that category i don't want to spoil anything no, since we'll no, probably you're wrong <laughs> No, I'm not. And I'll tell you off screen. Kevin. I mean, <laughs> oh, don't do it off screen. That's no good. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much. Please like comment and subscribe. Uh, and definitely let us know uh, your thoughts on this movie as well. We'll catch you. Hey, next and time. speaking of Kevin, I wore the shirt just for him. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> Cape, Cape fear. Uh, that's Kevin. A, for, for those that you don't know, Kevin, that's his favorite movie. The remake. You should, if he was on social media, I'd say send him all the clips of it. You can, because yeah. he's, yeah. Kevin, you know, his, I'll, I'll put his email in the thing down below and just send him, just keep sending videos. Oh my God. Keep here because he's such a huge fan. He would snap. <laughs> he would. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone. See ya. This has been a Touch of Madness production. Brought to you by the creative minds at Tommy Twins Media.